So we're here today to do the Q&A for my book, Persephone Rises. And one question that I've been asked quite a lot is for what reason I wrote the book. And mainly the reason why I wrote it is because I was just at a point in my life where I felt like I was kind of stuck as an artist. And so I decided that the easiest way to get my expression out there would be to focus more on writing. And so basically that's why I did. But another major reason why I wrote the book is because I've noticed a lot this whole pattern in the entertainment industry, especially when it comes to music, especially when it comes to filmmaking, this whole typical story that we've seen with a lot of artists like Mariah Carey and Tina Turner and in terms of the cases that went on with the women who were affected by Harvey Weinstein, this whole thing where you have a woman who's who's really passionate about her work as an artist and she's really trying to make a breakthrough in her career and then she comes across this this man who's like typically older than her but not always who happens to have either like the right connections or the right amount of money and so he's his turn making it and he's like I'll give you everything I'll make sure that you can make it as a you can make it in your career you can make it as an artist and then he ends up turning out to be an abuser and this is something that's been going on for a really long time I don't think I've heard maybe of at least one woman who hasn't dealt with a situation like this at least like in the uh, entertainment community and in my case what basically happened is about three months after moving to Toronto I started getting gigs on film sets I started working as a script supervisor for some movies, even though I didn't really have that much experience in that position because of the fact that I had already been uh, screenwriting and directing my own projects since the age of 18. It kind of gave me like some leverage to be able to prove that I could handle that type of position. And right around the same time that I began working on film sets, I met my ex-husband, who isn't exactly an artist, he's not somebody who works in film or anything like that, but he is somebody who works a lot, and he's also somebody who came from a family that's a little bit, I would say not necessarily rich or anything, but a little bit more privileged, a little bit more comfortable compared to the background I had to come from. I came from, sorry, where you had to work really hard in order to get somewhere. And so basically what happened is during the time that the two of us were together, I was kind of, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that I was necessarily struggling financially, but things could have been a lot easier. During the time that the two of us started dating, when we eventually became serious, he was like, you know, I can help you, you don't even have to work, you can focus on your career, I'll take care of you. And at the time, obviously, it was my first relationship, so I felt like really grateful, like, I was like, wow, you know, I like I met this guy, and he's like really supportive, and instead of like having to find yet another job in customer service, I can just focus on my goals while the two of us are together, you know? And so I thought that he was just being really supportive. In my goals because I figure that when you're in a relationship that's the thing that you're supposed to do right and then <laughs> uh, long story short you can read more about that in the book in terms of what happened between the two of us but long story short what happened is eventually I had pretty much control over every every faucet of my life he would criticize the way that I dressed he didn't want to kiss me if I wore lipstick he used to get jealous if I would hang out with my friends if I was text messaging friends he would like somehow accuse me even of cheating whenever I would be texting guys that I knew even though I wasn't actually doing anything and the two of us both had our passcodes to our phone like we had access to our phones and obviously like he could check whatever he wanted so he knew that nothing was going on by my side like I didn't really care what he was doing with his phone because I actually trusted him. And then 
as the relationship progressed, it got to the point where I felt trapped. But at the same time, I didn't, I guess psychologically, I didn't even realize that there was really much of a problem. So then what happened eventually is the two of us got married because his, his um, student permit was about to expire. And during that time, you know, like, I obviously cared about him. I wanted him to be able to stay. And at that point, like, people wonder why anybody would tolerate that kind of situation. But unless you've actually been there, you can't really say anything. So anyways, the two of us got married. And during that time, I gained a lot of weight. And I was just feeling, like, really low about myself. And he would, like, indirectly, like, make fun about my appearance and my size and all that and it was just really demeaning and then what happened is that during the time when after we got married back in I would say around the summer of 2017 I started writing the screenplay for Jane and Finch which I had the idea for quite a while at that point and so at that time it felt like my life was like sort of back on track and eventually we got into pre-production for the film but during that time, the relationship wasn't doing as well because I was starting to see things more clearly. And I was starting to see uh, the whole stonewalling thing and how he would always like leave whenever we were mid-argument as if to like put the blame on me so I would be responsible for whatever issue was going on between us. And I started feeling really like I was the only one in this relationship in the first place. And then one night in late November, about a few weeks after his birthday, I basically decided that the relationship was over. And when I told him, he went in the washroom and then he came back to me and he said that he almost took something in order to try and kill himself. And that was probably one of the worst nights of my life. <laughs> because I remember walking outside at like 4 o'clock in the morning with my dog wondering if he was going to try and do something to himself or if he's going to try and do something to me and actually actually at the time I sent a text message over to one of the actresses who was going to be auditioning for the role of Jane and I asked her for some advice and it just so happened that she was actually awake at that time so she told me that the situation between us it sounded very abusive and she recommended that I focus on doing what's best for myself. And then a few days later, the two of us actually got back together, <laughs> obviously, because that's kind of typical when you're in an abusive relationship. Then after the two of us got back together, things were okay for a certain amount of time. And then they went back to being the way they were before because of course an abuser will always say that they change but they never do and it's kind of unfortunate how on a psychological level we always tend to believe them because obviously we love the person so we want to believe the best in them then about a month and a half later when we were working towards uh, casting more of the actors for the film uh, the two of us finally broke up for good only somehow he still managed to try and bribe me into being a sponsor despite the fact that we were together even to the point where later on around spring when it was getting close to the time of filming he offered that if I sponsor him that he would fund at least half of the movie so his offer is basically that if you help me with my career I'll help you as an executive producer for Jane and Finch. Now, of course, at that point, exactly same ideal, but it also felt like the only option because, in when it comes to the indie aspect of filmmaking, it can be really difficult sometimes to get funding and all that. And at the time, it seemed like the right idea, but fortunately, by the time, like literally, like not even two days before we were supposed to film, one of the crew members dropped out which meant that we weren't able to make the movie and initially I was upset about this because I had been working really hard but then after that I was I was actually really happy about this because it was like this weight lifted and I finally saw like okay 
I don't need this abuser in my life who's going to try and take credit for my work and my film because he's trying to move forward in a way that's unethical just so I can get this movie done like it would not make sense like why would I have somebody work as a producer on my film who's basically a known abuser at least in my personal life I don't know how what his relationship history is necessarily about but at least like an abuser in my own life when the main character is a woman who's dealt with abuse and sexual assault herself you know like had people found out come the time the movie was made they would have been like what is this you know it would have just seemed hypocritical you know it's like it's like if having Harvey Weinstein as a producer for a movie about sexual assault. Like this is the type of thing that he's known for doing towards actresses in the Hollywood film industry. And yet you would ask him to produce a movie about sexual assault. It doesn't make sense. So like why would I want somebody who was emotionally abusive towards me in a relationship be a producer? on my film that basically talks about this kind of subject it really wouldn't make sense so at the end of the day I think the biggest lesson um, when you decide to order a copy of my book I think the biggest lesson initially would show like at what lengths sometimes we as artists are willing to go through in order to make it and the thing that we have to learn the most is that before we can even think of trying to build career for ourselves is we have to actually learn to believe that we can make it and that we don't need to rely on abusers or people who are going to potentially take advantage of you just so you can have a career as a singer or, or as an actor or as a film director or writer or anything really because even this summer when I was just about to finish writing for Stephanie Rogers I actually got offered a book deal from somebody who was an organizer of this program that I was taking and the book deal wasn't exactly in alignment with what my views are for my career and so I decided to turn it down because it just didn't feel like it showed my own integrity, my artistic integrity because I feel like if I'm going to take on a project with somebody we need to have the same beliefs and we need to align in terms of what our values are and I think too many times we see a lot of artists compromising their integrity and their personal beliefs just because we feel like we're so desperate to make it you know like a lot of us we get into this mindset where it's like I'm willing to do whatever it takes in order to become successful and then you have that abuser who comes around who's like really you're willing to do anything and that's actually a dangerous mindset I would suggest that even if you're somebody who's been working in the industry for a long time you need to understand the fact that you already have all the tools and you already have all the talent and everything that it takes in order to make it and you don't need somebody who's going to come along and say I can give you everything because if somebody's willing to give you everything it means that they don't actually believe in you they just want to take advantage of you if a person believes in you they're going to be supportive but at the same time they're going to let you have a few bumps in the road and they're going to allow you to make mistakes as a person so that way you can fully succeed in a way that's beneficial and I hope you enjoy the book thank you